What's up, guys? It's your boy, Panikiller910. You know what this means. That's right. The Finn Mako is now on the gallery. The most powerful submarine in the game can now be yours to use in any public session. But make sure to stick around for this entire video because this is not the only build I'm uploading. And there are some very powerful builds coming to the gallery. It's about to get crazy. So, if you want to know more about this build, and you haven't watched the Finn Mako video I have on my channel, I'd recommend you do so. Which I will leave a link for in the description. But in the meantime, I'm going to do my best to summarize what you have in this arsenal of a submarine. Because it is quite versatile. And right now, you're looking through the lens of the smart view camera and a Gascom Sea Slinger cruise missile torpedo. That's right, it does both. Which, by the way, the Gascom Sea Stinger will also be available on the gallery. The Gascom Sea Stinger carries 23 dynamite and is propelled by eight space thrusters and three outboard motors and has a kill radius of 20 meters. But not only that, this guided cruise missile torpedo is also proxy. So you don't need to hit direct to kill. If an enemy was present underneath the explosion, they would have been gone. I mean, this thing is basically a Tomahawk cruise missile, except not only can it be launched underwater, it can also go back underwater and then penetrate targets like this. Please give us more blast physics. Flash bulb. So for the next little bit of the video, I'm gonna show you what this thing can do in combat and a few examples of that. And stick around because there's still more builds that I'm announcing being uploaded in this video that are definitely worth your time. All right, and on to the next build, the Xerxes Swordfish. Yep, the LSAT Swordfish is coming to the gallery in a Xerxes packet. Airdropped, burst, heavy torpedo, that can go as high as 500 miles an hour, stays on the surface of the water, and carries about 50 dynamite in a 20 meter kill radius, sideways, and in length, about 40 plus meters. Now the question on everyone's mind is this, does it work on waves? Well, kind of, yeah. It definitely works better than most torpedoes on waves, but obviously not as good as it would on still water. But as you can see, it can stay over the waves for quite a while. And even if it does submerge, it is still a boat powered torpedo. So once it surfaces again, it's gone. And it's still cruising well over 200 miles an hour underwater. So it can still hit things over choppy seas. And keep in mind, your target 
is going to be dealing with the same issues of mobility. So it's pretty effective because it's proxy. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that this shit is as easy as it looks. This will require some practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's incredibly deadly against surface vessels. It is disgusting against surface vessels. It will probably one shot any target you come across. Probably. Next up, we have another highly requested package, the ASTV2 Perseus. This boat does use the exact same swordfish chassis that has dropped from the Xerxes, but there are some added benefits to launching it on the water. For instance, you're fighting another target in the water, so you're going to get closer and have a better vision of the In fact, I would say you need to practice with this realistically before you can really use the Xerxes to its fullest potential. But it's also a lot more gap. This is launched from a freaking railgun, so it's always coming out at about 250 to 300 miles per hour within a second of launch. Even at standstill, and it only goes up from there. If they're already moving, like I am in this clip, at over 100 miles an hour, and then launch, it comes out like an absolute bullet. Also, peep the freaking speed of the boat. Yeah, over 120 miles an hour. And it can handle waves too. So, it's an interceptor. It can go out and engage pretty much any naval asset in combat. And they're not going to be able to run from it very easily either. And once you get used to the joystick aimed vertical guns, it's actually pretty decent against aircraft too. It's not a sitting duck and it can pursue fast moving targets with an even faster moving one shot projectile essentially. Yeah, it's a beast. Oh, and it can take hits as well, including dynamite. Like, I've seen this thing tank 50 dynamite many times. If you haven't seen my developing most durable tank control makers video, you should definitely check it out because, dude, this thing is an anomaly. It is unusually strong in collisions. So far, it can kill literally anything it touches in a collision and come out on top. It's pretty much indestructible against collisions. It's very strange. And it's coming with an ATGM missile. So I'm going to do another video on the complete version soon. content.